to meet you. When you, you took the time off from, from Georgia, you know, time to kind of reset a little bit, at what point did you say to yourself, okay, maybe the itch is there and I'm ready to get back into it? Yeah, you know, that was a, it was a decision for me that was about, it's about family. And I just, I really enjoyed that time. But also too, with my kids and my wife, they, they're a football family. And that, you know, so the first year was, was, you know, pretty good. But then, you know, we just started kind of getting that itch a little bit. And in my mind, I was just, I just felt like it was, it was time. Like I really enjoyed the, you know, taking, you know, taking the kids to lunch and bringing them to weights in the morning and going to all their games. It was, it was a great time. But at the same time, they, you know, they missed the locker room and they missed being on the field and going to bowl games and stuff like that. So we just all sat down as a family and felt like, you know, it was time. And then obviously when Dabo called, uh, I had always had a, you know, unbelievable respect for the type of program that he ran. And uh, just from the outside looking in, the family and the, the faith and all, all those things, it all just kind of came together with the right timing and, um, you know, just a, a chance to be a part of a great program and, and do something special. Kind of during the season, it's you know families come on Wednesday nights for supper, and right. coaches, if your kids have ball games, you can go. Don't be here all the time. Was that part of it? Was that part yeah, of it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's part of it. You want you want to go to a, a great program, and I think um, I think that's what makes this place special. And I'm again excited to be a part of that. What's uh, Beth Wolf from Fox yeah. Carolina and Greenville? Um, what should fans? Expect from you, and when they look down on that sideline and they see you, what can the fans expect um, from your O line and from you as a person? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think I've always been um, just a guy. You know, just we're gonna we're gonna be O line that's connected, and um, we're we're gonna play together. And uh, I'm an emotional person, so we're we're gonna play we're gonna play with emotion and uh, you know play with toughness. This game's meant to be played a certain way, and uh, we're gonna demand that we're, we play that way. And uh, but we gotta just it's been a you know. A fast start. I'm trying to learn the plays and learn the guys. You know, coach. You know, Dabo put the uh, the names on their helmets for me, so at least he helped me out right there. But uh, it, it's been a great start, and the bowl game gives me a jump start. The only way you build relationships is go out there on the grass and work together. And, uh, and we got a long way to go. But I told them that after practice, we we do have a long way to a long way to go, but we're going to do it together. And I think as long as we stick together, we play really really hard, play the game the way it's supposed to be played, we'll be fine. Ish offensive coordinator here as well, and Garrett Riley. Um, what have you already seen from him, and what did you, what part did he play in your excitement of coming to this program and, uh, about the offense and what he's done in his career already? Right, and, and well, that's a good thing. You know, for for me, I've kind of been in several different offenses. I've been in spread offenses. We've been in you know pro style. So just doing it, you know, unfortunately or unfortunately, as long as I have, that's why I got all this gray hair. Just I, you know, I've been in several different offenses, but he's very very innovative. Um, you know, they call you know they call him an air raid guy, but he's done the last four games what he needed to do to win football games with running the ball. So that that's impressed me is uh, how he is kind of molded and changed to to do what he needed to do to win football games. So I thought that was that was really good. Coach Amanda Poole with Watch Fox out of Columbia. Just talked to Blake Miller out there with high praise for you and the energy that you bring here. Sorry, this already been asked, but what's the response been like with um, the guys you're working with? I think I think they're hungry. They, I think they want to learn. They want to get better. And uh, you know, I, I can't ask them to bring energy if I don't bring the energy. And uh, and you know, I think the O line is uh, has always been a, a special group just because they they all stick together and they all they're all hungry. They want to get better. And uh, we're, we're, we're kind of the only group out there that doesn't have a stat. Like, our stat is the scoreboard. And uh, so I'm, I'm just excited to get to work. And again, we got a long way to go. But I, uh, again, we're going to stick together and we're going to put the work in. And uh, we kind of get a bonus time, you know, working up to this bowl game that we kind of get some extra practices to get to know each other. <clears throat> What's your thoughts on high school recruiting versus transfer portal recruiting? Dabo has mentioned that you guys may look for a portal offensive line on top of high school guys. Um, right. How do those kind of mesh together? Yeah, I mean, I think you're, I think you're always looking for high school, and that that's the way this program has been built. Is you're you're, you're taking a freshman, and you're building them, and and th this is about like the complete person, you know, with the Paul journey and all the things that they do here that are special. But in this day and age, um, you know, if there is a guy that can come help us, especially if a guy is transferring and has got multiple years where we can develop him, that's even better. I don't think you're you know you're actually necessarily looking for a guy to come in and plug and play because we got good players, but anybody that we can come in and develop, I think that's what we're looking for. Matt, Mark Whiteman from WIFF in Greenville. You mentioned some of the draw about coming to Clemson. When Coach Sweeney was in here earlier, he said that 
you told him this might have been one of the few jobs you would actually accept to get back into football. So I was wondering if you could just expand on those thoughts about why this felt like the right fit for you. Well, I, again, the whole time I've been in coaching, um, we've, we've always competed against each other in recruiting. And just I've always had a, a, a tremendous amount of respect for what they've stood for here. And to now have an opportunity to come be a part of it is really, really cool. And I, I think um, this is a place where I think my family would be happy. Um, it's pretty close. It's in the south. It's where it's in my recruiting footprint where I've spent a lot of time. And uh, it's going to be around really, really good people. And we're going to have a chance to compete for national championships. So when you add all of it together, it was, it was a no-brainer. Matt Paul Strelow, Tiger Illustrated. Come in. Yeah, you've got uh, recruiting on the road. You've got this right. to, to pick up with the transfer portal. How does that add a different layer to your responsibilities just within these first week or two? Yeah, I, you know, I think I think you got to really do a really good job of evaluating. Um, for me, the challenge is okay. What do we have here? You know, I've only been on the grass with my guys twice. So what do we have here versus what are we looking for? And you all, it can't be, I mean, you got to see next year, but what about two years down the road, three years down the road? Like how are we building this thing and, and, and building your roster? And so I think that's the challenge for me is, okay, what do we have up front and then how are we going to build that roster moving forward? So but the biggest challenge is knowing what we have and then how are we going to fix it and get better. Really, really got a little bit tired. My voice, I got my coaching voice uh, uh, back a little bit. But I, it's, it's been fun. It's just been good to get out there and coach ball again. Um, like I said, it's only been two practices. But, e but even the meetings and the guys are hungry to learn. They want to get better. It's, it's been good. If there's one thing you can get across to the guys in this time you call bonus time, right? Um, what is it? What's, what's that driving force right yeah, now? Yeah, just connection. Connection, playing together. Like um, if you know – the guy next to you and you're connected to him and you know his why and you know why he's playing, you're going to play harder for him than if you're just going out there trying to play for yourself. So we want a group that's connected. And, uh, and I really feel like that's, that's so important in the O-line room especially. We don't want to be out there five pennies. We want to be one nickel. and We want to be playing together. Uh, Larry Williams, yep. .com. It's interesting to hear that it wasn't just you who kind of missed the field in the locker room, but yeah. it was your family right. as well. Right. Like that, can you maybe yeah. expand on that some? And Did that surprise you? Uh, it, it, it did. It, it probably, I don't know if it surprised me a little bit, but the fact that um, you know, they, they, they missed, that's all they, that's all they ever knew. And I think them, the kids being in the locker room, being on the field, um, you know, going to the bowl games, having the kids over for dinner, um, all those things, um, you know, you, you miss that, you miss that part of it. And again, the time I had was unbelievable. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world, but what, you know, the, the beauty of it was we had some other opportunities last year that we, we sat down, okay, hey, it's been a year. What do y'all, what do y'all think? And so this was all us together. It's not like a decision, hey, I'm ready to get back. I'm going back. This was a family decision. Um, and it was, it was one we didn't take lightly. Um, but again, because of all the stuff we said earlier, I think uh, that's what makes uh, it made it a no-brainer for us. Are they going to stay in Athens and finish up the school year? The school year yeah. and then and then come. Yeah. Okay. So what was it like, you know, sitting at the table and you go, hey, guys, Davo Sweeney called me. What, what was the boys' <laughs> reaction to, hey, I've got this chance to, to go? Well, as y if y'all have children, y'all know that children, like I raised – two kids the same way, but they're totally different. <laughs> so so that their, their reactions are different. Um, but uh, it was one that we just felt like it was time. And I'm sure uh, my wife, as much as she liked having me around the house, she was probably ready for me to <laughs> you know, get out a little bit and, and start coaching. But uh, no, we, we sat down and we just felt like it was time. And it's not like you were gone a decade. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. Have, you, have you given any thought to, man, I can't wait. Like, I'm not going to rush bowl practice, but to put the headset back on and get down on the field and that, Gator Bowl setting and actually do what I was born to do. Is it, yeah. Have you given any thought about what that's going to be like? Um, well, so in 2019, I was fired at Ole Miss, and I came into a very similar situation coaching the Sugar Bowl at Georgia. So I've kind of been through a transition like this before. You're coming in, you got to learn the offense, learn the people, you got to recruit. So I, I, I've had experience doing this before. And what I learned is, like, that preparation for the bowl game, you get to – I mean, you know all the players because you, you have to. You got to learn. You got to learn the scheme. You got to get out there, and that's the best way to build relationships. Is out there, uh, getting baptized by fire. You're not just kind of out there. You, you come out here and watch or whatever. But it's not like getting out there and getting your hands dirty. You get you get to know each other better that way. I think I read an interview you did 
I guess, a couple of months after you um, stepped away, and you said it dawned on you when y'all were at Disney World, and you're about <laughs> to get right. on a Harry Potter ride. That's right. Having to make sure recruits can come to right. the games. game. That, yeah, that was, it up. was. It was. I think we were playing in Charlotte, and they had some kind of new rule that recruits could come to a, uh, a neutral site game. So they passed that rule, so we were all scrambling, trying to get recruits to come to that game in Charlotte. And uh, so it was, it was Cooper's birthday. And, and again, um, I think we all carry that pressure and that weight and anxiety to be a great recruiter, to be a, a great coach and a great father. And that, that two years off, it really, it's, it's not about the weight, it's about how you carry the weight. And, and you know, you can, when you're present with your kids, you need to be present with your kids. And when it's time to work, it's time to work. And I think, you know, having that work-life balance is the one thing that I learned that's really, really important. Nothing against any other staff, but do you think there's more of an emphasis on that? I, you know, I, you know, not. I mean, I, I really like what Dabo is doing here, but you know, Kirby does a great job, and you know, Coach Cutcliffe did a great job, and all, all the pit coach Freeze. I mean, everybody is unique in their own way, because uh, the pressure really comes internal. It's the pressure you put on yourself to be good at what you do. Uh, but I, but you know, Dabo and the family atmosphere. Sure, that's that's something I'm excited about. My kids being able to be around. You know, the more the better. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's difficult because recruiting, coaching, parent, I mean, everything is about relationships. And when I've been a good recruiter, it's because you've, you've spent three years building a relationship with somebody. Um, so now there may be a kid in the portal that maybe I recruited and had already developed that with, but it's very, very tough because to me it's all about relationships. So you, and you have to build those if you want to be a successful recruiter. So coming in and you don't know anything about a kid, it does make it, it adds a level of difficulty for sure. John Blount, the post in Charleston. I know you said you did this process once before in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, but what is it like in terms of not knowing the terminology and trying to get that translated? Yeah. Out so it's just speaking a different language. Football is football, so it's the same plays. It's you know it's inside zone, it's counter, it's you know the, the normal protections. It's just what are we calling it? What were they calling it? How can I give my players a chance? How can I give Putman a chance to win this game? This is this is his last game at Clemson, so I don't want to come in here and change everything for him. Him, I want to give him a chance to win this football game. So how can I marry my teaching and then eventually get to it, if that makes sense? That, that's the challenge. You want to give your guys an opportunity to be successful. But there, there is some carryover with the line calls and the terminology. It's just me learning what do they call this. And so that's, and that's just me getting out there and doing it. And again, going to a bowl game, actually going on the grass and practicing it, you learn it much faster. Percentage. I'm probably a little ahead of that. You gotta give me a little credit. Probably 30, maybe. 30, 33 percent. Let's say. Okay. I love watching you out there. You you were giving it this. And, and you, you know, hands on. Is right. That, do you enjoy the teaching part of the game? Is that I do. I, that, that's that's to me. That's what it's all about. It's about teaching. It's about trying to get a young man to to reach something, his potential, like even further than he thinks he can go. You take, you know, you take them and you take them to a place with relationships um, and they know you care about them, you can coach them really, really hard. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to develop those relationships. And as soon as they realize, hey, Coach Luke's got my back, then I can coach them really, really hard. And so that, that's the goal is being that connected, tight group that then you can, then you can take them to that next level. And you mentioned somebody like Will, who this is this, this is it. This yeah. is all he's got. This is his last moment with Clemson right. football. Um, how much have you already connected? I mean, like he's a guy that you know you kind of can't help. A him lot, I, you know. So David Cutcliffe, Tommy Tuberville left my senior year. I was a se senior captain on the center. He left and went to Auburn. David Cutcliffe came in and coached my bowl game. Same same thing. He gave us an opportunity to win. And I never forget that. I mean, that's something I'll thank Coach Cut. I mean, I, I have that memory for the rest of my life. So again, just my uh, experiences that I've that I've been part of. It just it helps you when you go through something like this. What, what sticks out to you? Like, what do you when you think of that memory when it comes up? Like, what instantly hits for you? So he calls me into my office. He says, Matt, what do y'all call this play? And I told him. So he was going to call his plays, but use the terms that we called it. So I just so he called me in his office. And we went through that whole deal, 
And he was like, well, have you ever thought about being a coach? <laughs> I was like, no, sir. He's like, well, why don't, why don't you come be a coach? It changed the rest of my life. So that, that's kind of what comes to my mind. So, yeah. Yeah. People, right. Which one was really excitable? Well, I mean, they, they, they both were excited just in their, in their own way. And um, they just kind of, one wears their feelings on their sleeve and the other one's just kind of quiet. But uh, just, they were, they're both excited. And they were, when I brought, when I brought the Clemson gear home, they, you know, I was like, you know, probably don't need to wear it all to school the first day. Let's just kind of go slowly uh, in, into it. But they're, they're both excited. They, they really both, all, they, all, they both want to go down the slide. That's what they mentioned to me. So we're going to have to get down the slide pretty, pretty quickly, I think. So. Uh, my younger one's more quiet than my older one's a little bit, a little bit more, you know, gung ho a little bit. So, Matt, your kid plays North County, right? Uh, they do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and Mickey Khan recruited over there. Did you have any pre-existing relationships with coaches here before coming over here? Uh, so we had, I had a relationship with Coach Khan through Robert Kimdichi, the recruitment. He was he was the coach there, so we had had a little bit uh, there. There's um, the church I go to. Um, the pastor there was his first team chaplain at Grayson. So there, there's a lot of connection between North and, and Coach Khan. And there's a lot of uh, people that were there that are there now. So, yeah, there's some, there's some carryover. And then Dabo and I were at the ACC, SEC, SEC Chick-fil-A Challenge, you know, a couple years together. So ran across them. Um, Woody uh, and Coach Cut had a big, uh, you know, they were, they were close for several years at Tennessee. So, that, yeah, there was, some, there was some carryover there for sure. called you that he needed you to do to get this offensive line back to where? No, he, he just he just asked me if I if he said he was gonna um you know he had made a change and you know was I ready to get back into it and and uh and so I you know so I just I talked to my family. It wasn't about hey I need you to do this. He was just hey I think uh, we can do this together. We wanna you know we wanna do something really special and get this thing back to where where we all want it to be. And uh, and again, it comes back to that connected, all working together and doing it together. And I'm I'm excited about that opportunity. You said there were some opportunities last year, as you talked about it with your family. Was it was the message from you to them pretty much? It's got to be the right opportunity. And just... exactly. I mean, there was no there was no need to rush back or, or or anything like that. It just needed to be everything, location, people, the the whole the whole package. It had it had to be had to be right, and this was right. Clemson at all this season? Did you have any, you know, knowledge of um, anything before you decided to to take the job? Uh, yeah, I'm sure I watched games. I, I watched a lot of games, <laughs> you know, in the uh, in the time. But yeah, I'm, I, I probably watched. Um, I don't know, two or three games. I didn't watch every game, but you know, just like the I was the casual, you know, guy at home watching the games for so the big games, and they were on TV. I, I watched it some. So, but not, but not every game. I wasn't like an expert. So, you know, coming in. Um, you know, watching the tape and trying to get a feel for what we're good at, and you know how what, try to give the guys the best chance to compete in, against Kentucky. So, are you excited to kind of get them in, in pads? Yeah, I mean, I think. Well, I mean, the, the game is yeah, the game's played in pads. So that the only way you get better at football is practice football, and so you got to go out there in pads and, and get after it and kind of find out um, find out where they're at. Just watching you coach uh, two times your second body presence. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, body presence is the inside half of a double team and trying to get my back half right through the middle of his body. But most of the time you're double team, you're, you're, you're double teaming to somebody. So you got body presence on the down man, but your eyes are on the linebacker. So body presence on the double, then eyes on the backer. So that makes sense. Okay. Just, uh, obviously you coached the national championship offensive line at Georgia. What right. made that unit so great? And is there other things that you can translate to? Connection. Connection, toughness, and that's the emotion, playing for each other. Um, and it was a group that, you know, they went through COVID together and, you know, battled through. They got close several times and then finally got over the hump. But the connection and the toughness, the mental toughness, um, you know, because there's going to be a game where you get tested. you got to dig down deep. you got to find something extra. And it might, um, you know, your, your why and why you're playing has to be bigger than you being tired. You've got to push through that, and that's, that's what we got to get to. Number of offensive linemen you'd like to have available to play, or like in your rotation. 
Oh, I'm like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we get 15 off scholarships. I'd like to have 15. That would be the goal. Um, no, I mean, you'd like to have, you know, seven or eight for sure that, that, that can go in there and play the game because injuries are a part of the game. And, you, I mean, we, we got some right now. We got a couple guys out. So the next man has to step up. You have to build depth. You will never go through a season offensive line and just have all five guys playing. It just doesn't happen. So you have to have guys ready to play. That's why reps are so important. We did a, we did a period for 10 minutes after practice for just the young guys getting reps, trying to get them ready. Like how many times can, can they do it over and over and over again? And, uh, and the, the one of the great parts of being at Clemson, their defense, I mean, you're playing against a great defense every day at practice. That's how you get better. And uh, so I think that, that's a big deal. Do we have any questions for Coach virtually from those on Zoom? Uh, yeah, Matt, this is uh, Pete Yacobelli with the Associated Press here in South Carolina. What's up, Pete? Welcome to, welcome to the state. Hey, thank you. A couple you. of uh, quick ones for you. When they finally, when you finally figure out where your office is and get there, <laughs> the, the, the football chops immediately kick right back in. Do you say, okay, this is how we're going to meet, this is how we're going to practice, <laughs> does it all come rushing back like ride the bicycle? It, it it is so especially in the in the O line meeting that part of it the X's and O's is but you're you're coming into a new system so what you want to try to figure out do is okay what can I do to help like you try to figure out the lay of the land and so what can I add to this so you try to figure out okay what do I do best and how can I add to this system because you don't want to just come in and try to go crazy you want to try to you know feel make okay this is what they're doing how can I help so that that's that's the process that we're in right now. Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, I made that decision um, probably two years ago when I decided to step away. I, in my mind, I was like, okay, I probably won't do that again. Um, but again, you don't you don't know the future. I mean, my dad taught me a long time ago: you do the best job you can where you're at, and then whatever happens after that is going to happen. So uh, we're going to come here, and we're going to do everything we can to help Clemson win a national championship, and that's what we're going to do. And then whatever happens after that happens. Thanks, man. Yep. Anybody else in the room for Coach Blue? Was there did step away and there had to be some kind of out of body sort of like I can't believe I'm. I think Neil McCready, who I was talking to, yeah. said it might have been at the gym where you're hanging out with all the retired folks and you're like you're the young guy and it's like yeah. all right this is kind of strange. Right. Can you sort of reflect back on that and what it was like just when you're so programmed to be grinding all the time and then you just show yeah it off? My, my first. Uh... So the first spring I was off, my, my youngest son practiced with Andrew, Kirby's youngest son. And they were practicing, I think, up at the, the football facility, but they were having spring practice. So I was dri driving around spring practice taking my son to baseball practice. I was like, that was just kind of, that was, I think, that moment you're talking. I was like, that's kind of weird, <laughs> you know. But, um, but again, I, again, I really cherished that time. That was it was a great time, and a time that we can't you know it, it was a time you'll never get back. So it was uh it was really good for me, but I think all again together collectively we just felt like okay it, you know it's time to, to go back to work. Anybody else? Coach Don Munson, Clemson Raiders. They don't. So how did you use the off time? I'll put it to just grow personally. I mean there had to be it's just just not a blank. It's not a blank period of time. How did you use that time to just grow personally? Yeah, I think um, I think whenever you're, you know, at the you know, and that the head coach in the SEC that you're coming over and you're fighting, competing to win a national championship, there's this there's this anxiety and pressure that hangs over you all the time. To be able to step back from that and um, kind of in your mind flip back, okay, this is what's really important. Uh, you you can you can still work really really hard, uh, but when you're at home, be present. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a way to do that. And, again, it's not – we all carry the weight is how we carry the weight. And I think that's what I learned um, probably in that time. Hey, Donna. John Valdudo with the Roar. Um, John. When you're recruiting guys, whether that's a transfer portal guy or a high school kid, right. what are some traits that you're looking for in someone that you want to play for, whether that's uh, physically, mentally, their background, what kind of things you look for? Um, so, again, I'm going to initially identify them with – Size, athleticism, toughness. I want to see them jump off the tape, and we're gonna we're gonna build it starting there. And then once we find that group, then we're gonna dig in and we're gonna get to know them as people. 
and trying to build that relationship. And then as you get to know them, you'll know pretty quickly which guys fit with you. And uh, then, you, then however many you're taking, you have a set number. So if I want to sign this many, I'm going to bring this many on campus, and I need to hit on a certain percentage of those guys. But I'm going to identify talent, and you're going to see that jump off the tape. Then I'm going to get to know them, and then we're going to build that relationship and make the decisions from there. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yep. Anyone else? All right. Thank you for your time, Coach. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you all. All right.